So he was on Face the Nation this weekend. Like I said, the war machine, right, is in full theatric mode. Right now they got to prove to the American public that Ukraine is actually winning the war and Putin is on his heels. Therefore, they can spend more money in their pump and dump scheme and eventually fill their own pockets because that's what it is. It's just a uh, a bribery Freaking scheme where they're just laundering money left and right. We know this from the FTX scandal, and that's what's going on. I think that our boy Mitch McConnell said, oh, well, uh, it's not the money that's going to Ukraine. It's going to the defense contractors, so that's okay. Half a million almost dead in Ukrainians. That's really sad. Uh, Russians, too, as well. But here's Sean Penn sitting down with Vladimir Green Screen Zelensky the day of the invasion. Actor and director Sean Penn is the co-director of a new documentary called Superpower. It's about President Zelensky and the war in Ukraine. Zelensky agreed to meet with Penn in person for the first time on camera on the same day Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. It's great, great that you are here. It's very important now and all this support. And I think you're, you're always the most important advice I think Americans has to hear. Mm -hmm. So I think you see that. We are just ordinary people who, who wants to live in my in our country. Yeah, and how are you here? It's I mean it's it's so dangerous to be here at this time in this country with you, with your countrymen. I mean it's such there's there's so much inspiration to be had here. We spoke with Penn on Friday about his new film. In one of the clips, um, Andre Yermak, one of the top advisors to President Zelensky, says to you, you know, the U.S. position should be stronger if the United States and Joe Biden doesn't do something now. Essentially, he says America's over. America's that over. That followed with a pretty robust financial investment by the United States, more than $50 billion, uh, pledges of weapons. I just have to stop it for two seconds right now because I know a lot of people are focused on what Sean Penn's about to say in green screen, uh, Zelensky, Vladimir. Uh I, I really get disgusted by with the mainstream media, the way they're so pro-war themselves. They just casually say this stuff, you know, like, oh, if that was followed by this finances that were coming here while they were under attack and whatnot. The mainstream media is such a an accessory. Is that the word right there? An accomplice? It's just well, an infomercial for this thing. Yes. I can't wait to see it. I have to tell you. The parts where they're like, you know, uh, hand jobbing each other are going to be real dull. Like the clip they just showed is like, are you joking? Yeah. This has got to be the most dull. But there's going to be what I want to hear is all the nonsense she said. Because she was quoting, I think, the doc, right? Mm -hmm. She goes, America's over if they don't win. Yes. Is like, that right? You're fr uh, I think we were over Ukrainian that. freedom is tied to American freedoms because if we don't stop Ukraine now, then they'll go to the Baltic states next because Putin wants to recreate the old Soviet Union Wait, and they'll yeah. come marching all the way through is Europe. That what it is? I thought I'm like so us losing two in a row. Yeah. That wasn't a threat of America being over. But this other people's thing. Yes. Okay, we. I guess we've and a it's lot such of money a lie, this. Kurt, because the Russian Federation, especially Putin, they don't. Need, they didn't even want the Donbass. They didn't even want that area, which is predominantly filled with Russian-speaking people. Because you know why? Because then you got to manage that territory, and they don't want to do that. They got bankrupt during the Soviet Union. They understand this. They wanted the Donbass, and we know this from Mix One and Mix Two. That push and tr Putin tried to really push for everybody to agree to. They didn't want it. They didn't want to have to manage Don it. Donbass didn't want to be part of them either. They want to be autonomous. At one point. Yeah. But then at, at, when it got too far, then they were like, no, we need your protection, obviously, because these Azov Nazi battalions are going to continue to bomb us and terrorize us. So then at one point, I'm pretty sure most of them like, all right, we need Russia's help in here because they knew what was going on. But listen, this is going to get good over here, buddy. The, the best parts haven't even been played yet. Watch this. But... From what I've heard you say, you think the United States isn't doing enough. It is my absolute feeling that the caution with which the United States has pledged support, which seemed in my reading of, of, of uh, February 2020, 2022, was a <clears throat> like a lean on in the fear of nuclear conflict, something I think all of us should look very carefully at and understand it, of course, is possible, and that's to be concerning. The likelihood is extremely low. Why? 
<laughs> why, wait, it's what? possible, but the likelihood is extremely low. And that was after he said that caution turns to cowardice. Hey, I have to take my goddamn shoes off at the airport still, just in case there's another shoe bomb that they could have stopped by just looking at the guy's shoes. Yeah. And I'm supposed to not give a shit about a nuclear uh, yeah. holocaust. Okay. But, but he has to say that because otherwise he's it's dumb not, as hell. He is. Well, dumb. it's not. It's going to. He'll be hypocritical then. It, you know, it will go against that. It. It's counterproductive okay, of what is, his story is that we need to not be cowardice and continue to fund them okay. to the friggin' not. Whoever, whoever puppets him, what I want to know is why the, whoever's puppeting him, this dim bulb, wh why they're not afraid of it. I'll tell you what I suspect the most is we probably got some kind of weapon that's way better than nukes. Is no. The only way I can see the you whole know what I think it is, Kurt? Cavalier. No, I think they think that they're going to live underground. That they'll be safe. I think that's I think the oligarch thinks that they, they have their bunkers and they'll go underground and they'll be think, fine and they'll all clear and they'll come up when it's done. But okay, yeah. But for Ukraine, they would do that? I don't I just like that don't add up to me. They must have some where they're like Russia can't use those nukes. So don't but they don't want to tell I us. I also think they're cocky enough to think that they're so, they're the crazy ones. I'm not talking about Sean Penn. Who knows what the hell yeah. what, what is with his hair too? What's he got Kalinsky hair now? He does. Check him out. And as one of our witnesses in the film uh, says, you know, are we going to let a gangster with nuclear weapons dictate the way we live? Are you? Uh, oh, oh, Kurt, are you kidding me? Are we going to let this crazy guy with nuclear weapons di dictate the way no, we live? We're talking like, about freedom. Wait, wait, wait. Democracy. I currently let a gangster with nuclear weapons tell me how to live. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> it's good, though. It's got more. We got more. So I think that, uh, and that the Ukrainians won't let him do that. They won't. In uh, the documentary, you spoke with a Ukrainian fighter pilot named Juice. Remember the Moonfish and Juice story? No. These two guys came during the top, the release of Top Gun in the beginning of the war, right? Uh, I think it was after Top Gun, shortly after, to ask for, they wanted to push this F-16 program. Watch, watch how Sean Penn gets emotional about Wait, it. Was that their genders or their call signs? No, they were oh. call signs. Moonfish and Juice, Hollywood, Slider. In uh, the documentary, you spoke with a Ukrainian fighter pilot named Juice, who I understand was killed later in a training incident. Was your personal connection you know to what? him training and exercise. His, the case he made to you part of why you are pushing this point on F-16 so strongly? I was pushing it when I was with Juice and he was alive. He dreamt of flying F-16s. I think that he was a man who was born into a time where he had to do this extreme thing, and he did it with poise and skill and focus. Hold on. So, so uh, I when he made this movie, yeah, Moonfish and Juice came to the United States to push for this F-16 program. Right, because they wanted to get F-16s, F -16s, F-16s, which yeah. made no sense because these guys are Ukrainian. They fly much, MiGs. You they can't fly just MiGs. switch to an F-16. Yes. Well, did he die? I don't know. Did he get his make and same, then died? I asked Because you can't question. do that? I think he died before the F-16 program came, oh. came to light. I, because, I, dude, Kurt, I, I asked immediately, same, that's what I think. I, I said the same thing. Like, they pushed for an F-16 program, put him in an F-16, and he crashed the thing because they're used to flying MiGs. Oh my God! Why is his hair white? Because he saw the ghost of Kiev. <laughs> Let's just check it out. It's all. They try to get the emotional, personal and, connection, and skill, and focus, and and compassion. And compassion. so he had come to Washington to lobby for the F 16s and also was buying helmets for his helicopter pilot is friends he crying? on yeah. eBay here to get bring emotional. back. Um, so wait, it, wait, it wait, was wait, like wait, that. Wait! 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 wait. Why don't they have helmets if we send them $130 billion? Like, why don't they have helmets? What is that money going to? Because we didn't have enough money for the helmets for the helicopter pilots. We got them. We got them. And that's just some bullshit story so he could just make an emotional, you know, kind of like point about things. The way he, they're trying. I mean, think about this. How do they even think to bring this into this whole, this whole discussion? It's like a script. Dude, I thought, I thought he, I didn't, until I saw a picture of Juice, I thought he was just being catfished. No. And he's just like, There's, oh, I, Juice, he wants I, to meet Juice. And, oh, Juice passed away. I want to know what's up with Moonfish, if Moonfish is still alive. What's Juice's real name? They don't say. I have, no, they all just said Moonfish and Juice. And they oh, showed these. You can't these, look them up and see they what they yeah. You could probably find them out their names, but they showed just the two of them. That's their call sign. It makes it more. We're, we're, we're a G.I. Joe top nation. Gun. Yeah, it makes it more Top Gun. That was like, it was, so it, it was like that. And <laughs> then 
I suppose now, what, was it July that it was announced that there would now be an F-16 program, those resources Eventually, yeah. Yeah, over a long period of time. Sad story. His friends, Milf, Milf he, and Juice. Milf, Moonfish and Juice. Oh, Moonfish, sorry. Juice did not live to see the F-16s that are coming our way. It's a beautiful story. They're sending over weapons of war, and it's just so beautiful. Uh, and what, a couple of weeks later, um, I got the message that he'd been killed. Uh, I, I, I think not only would Juice be alive today if we had been as bold as we like to claim to be historically as a country with our mm -hmm. principles, with our Republicans and our Democrats, with our leadership. Do you hear his voice? The He's citizenry too, for, while we we're putting on. He's trying to say that the lack of us sending them as much weaponry as possible is what caused the death of Juice. And we can't make that mistake again, Kurt. I think he's assuming... Uh, we can't like, make that mistake again. Yeah, I think he's just assuming I care a lot more about his friend Juice than I do. Yeah. It's a good story. The citizenry, too, while we were putting all those Ukrainian flags out, we should have been as demand decisiveness in this case because at some point, caution becomes cowardice. There it is again. But, uh, there's you know still that an opportunity. Like? That sounds like when Matt Damon, Matt Damon was at FTX. So he did the who did the ad for where he goes fortune favors the bold to get you into crypto just for FTX. Mm -hmm. I think it was FTX. It was. I think it was for FTX. He sounds like he's saying yeah. well, crypto. It was stuff. Matt Damon. It was FTX. Yeah. 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 Fortune favors. It becomes coward. This is like an investment in a goddamn scam. Yeah. And that's what he's trying to tell you to do because here Zelensky's coming this week. This came out this weekend. The weekend before Zelensky's coming to lobby to Congress and lobby to the American people that they need more money for weapons of war because their freedom, it, it, your freedom depends upon their freedom. You see, now did you, uh, would you show me before the, him talking about the fact we need to. We're going to go right okay. after that okay. because we want to, we want to show this parrot, lover, yeah. this parrot's the same bullshit of like, put your seatbelt on and you know what I'm talking about. Check it out. But just look at him, dude. This this is this guy needs to be smacked right across the head. Becomes cowardice, but there's still an opportunity mm -hmm. for us to do the right thing. Fifty eight percent of Americans polled by CBS disapprove of the way Joe Biden is handling the situation with Russia and Ukraine, and I'm getting the sense from you you're disappointed too. Yeah, I respect President Biden very much. There have been a couple of things that I think have been disasters up to this point. There should be an implicit understanding be between private citizens and mm -hmm. leaders in government that, you know, there are things that I don't know about. Yeah. <laughs> things that should be, need to remain. Does that not sound like manufacturing consent for the government wait, to wait, not wait, tell wait, us what wait, we need wait. to know? What, okay, wait. Because he was like saying there's what some things. What is he getting at? I'm going to play the rest of the, the thing, but he, right off the bat, when he started saying this, he's like manufacturing consent for them to be, to not be transparent with the public. No, that's where, that's where I'm taking it. Yes. Right? So this is about both this war and vaccine. Is that what this, where this is going? And I was thinking he was talking, no, I think okay. he was just talking about war in this clip, but. Standing between private citizens and mm -hmm. leaders in government that, you know, there are things that I don't know mm -hmm. about. <laughs> Things that should be need to remain classified. You right. Know. So every day, even when I was with Juice, I was privately thinking, yes, it's our job to fight this fight. But privately, I was thinking, but maybe they are doing it behind closed doors. And tomorrow we're going to wake up to that mm -hmm. squadron. Um, what squadron? United States? Boots on the ground? What is he talking about? Oh, he was hoping that they're doing it. Maybe. Like I don't know. More, he was saying some form of more. We'll wake up oh, today. Now I remember. Okay, so 58% of Americans disapprove of how Biden is handling this. Did she just suggest that that 58% wants him to send more money to Ukraine? Yeah. And he, and he's Kurt, with them. Bingo! The same way they did it with once again when people were like, oh, Trump didn't handle the, the, the cor coronavirus situation bad. In other words, they wanted more lockdowns and more mandates. They twisted and flipped it on his head. That's what they just did right here, ladies what and gentlemen. Vancouver? All right. That's what they just did to you, ladies and gentlemen, and Kirk caught him in live time. <laughs> Enough time has passed. I think it's been to date a tragic mistake, and, and I hope and encourage this president um, 
that he deserves the legacy of doing this properly. Polling also really? shows big majorities of Americans continue to support economic sanctions on Russia. 61% of Republicans, though, say... Did you hear that, too, as well? Most people are cool with sanctions on Most Russia. Most people are. Most people... Do not think because twice. they say if it's a, they only think it's cool if it's if there's a choice war or sanctions then of course they take sanctions but if you stand alone on their heads most people say we shouldn't be doing anything well maybe now but uh, when we that's killed, a, that's a fugazi statement when we sanctioned all those Iraqi kids to death you know back in the day when they said it was an either or I remember I'd very, rather sanction them than go to war no, with no, them I'm telling you straight up the people in that studio and New York all these people they're like that's like the jet. I swear to God, they think of it as a gentler thing and not terrorism, which yeah. is what it is. That's why they love cancel culture, which is sanctions. Yes. That's why they love it. It, it is exist. sanctions. It yeah. doesn't exist, but we need more of it. Yeah. It's sanctions. They love all shit libs love sanctions. They because love they it. think it's a way of nudging people. The U.S. should not send weapons to Ukraine. 50% say the U.S. should not send aid and supplies to Ukraine. That is a big shift from where the Republican Party was in terms of in Yo, the this, past being very all... strong on Russia. What happened? But some of it, in terms of the rhetoric, reflects this sense that America needs to fix itself at home. How do you respond to, to that, to that thinking? <laughs> I think there's more than a compelling argument that would change those minds. Is and I understand why they're confused. Yeah. I mean, we can convince people for more war. Wait, why is what is the argument? Here, well, here we go. Here we. I mean, I understand not in mind. Those things would change those minds. Okay. And I understand why they're confused. Yeah. I mean, they're I'm confused. hoping in its little way that that this film can help context. I would be confused if I hadn't had the opportunity to do this. Better communication of the why and the justification. Yeah, I think for the our, billions of dollars. Of yeah, the if the spent. current <laughs> leadership would just do one thing now, it would be. The president saying to his cabinet, we are not spinning the story on Ukraine anymore. So if it's about what are they capable of, we're going to let our commanders in Fresno at the Cal National Guard that's been doing joint ex military exercises with them for oh. 30 years tell us what their capability is. And we're going to say it unfiltered to oh, the American wait, people. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I get what he said. Okay, so Ukraine is losing real bad mm -hmm. whatever all the money we wasted on it mm -hmm. it was never enough so this dumb dumb mm -hmm. is seeing the very real devastation that we that this proxy war has caused mm -hmm. and in his moronic head mm -hmm. his idea is to go all in on it yes because ukraine's freedom is also tied to our freedom and democracy just like that one dude said in the very beginning of the the interview who was in the room with him and Zelensky, saying that you guys need to do this because if you don't america's going to end well they i have keep to wear a mask us. if they don't win well well that's the next Will video I be locked we'll watch down if ukraine doesn't win Let's 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 finish this up real quick. You end the documentary talking about this feeling of unity you had when you were in Ukraine and you compare it to what you see here at home. And you and actually end Berlin. on the images of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the congresswoman um, and Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, of Georgia. And you say we're going backwards. Why do you think they symbolize that? I think that we've come to a point <clears throat> where. We as, as the voters, we as the citizens have to look at our politicians and say, look, you're very smart. We agree with your policy. What? Um, why would you want to call it socialist? Why, why would you want to put up a middle finger to people who have a reaction to that? Okay. You're a leader. Think hard, John. Just get the policy across. I'm oh not interested in these people self-celebrating. He's so close to the answer and he can't form it in his dumb blonde head. Why do you think it is? Because they're on purpose, Sean, to yeah. not pass those things. Yeah. Oh, he's a genius. So he's probably seen some... So this is actually some insight into how Hitchens got on board with the Iraq war because they make they go travel around, make friends with some people yeah. and they see people they care about die. Yeah. And then they're like, no, it is a good could come because yeah, my yeah, friend yeah. Juice... Yeah, and all that—that's what they do. They get you emotionally involved. 
And um, without all the information, which he just got done. Dude, I got some friends who went in uh, from the Ukrainian side, whatnot, and they were just kind of cursing left and right that uh, Russia's awful and stuff because they saw the bombing and whatnot, and they only see one side. Do they see the van jamming Ukrainians in? They didn't see that. That's that's what I'm saying. They they don't take them to those areas. They let them see what they want them to see. I'm Sean Penn. I bet Sean Penn. Oh, you know what? I would have thought Sean Penn never saw that. I bet he did, and I bet he's like, they wouldn't have to do this if America would step up. You think up. so? Uh, wow. That's what I told. Well, you heard what he said. Ladies and gentlemen, do you think Sean Penn witnessed any of those soldiers getting thrown in the vans? I don't think they were doing no, that No, a then. video or a, it, like... Did you think Sean Penn saw a video or anything, or he just ignores it to this day, of them forcing he's young kids to the no, front no, no. line? You not answer that question. He's there. If he's emotionally attached, right, and he yes. came back... That means he's looking probably it was emotional to see how it's being covered. Yes. Because he cares about it. So that means if you most people don't care, so they don't even know about all the Nazi flags and all that stuff. So if you care about it and you're looking at it, he's probably seeing, oh, they're not winning. All the news that we get. Yeah. He's getting all that, and then his brain turns into we should spend more money on this. We should not only spend more money. It seems like he's okay with committing American and NATO troops there too, as well. Yeah, we're going to not lose democracy. We might lose NATO, which yeah. uh, I'm really into. Really into that. Oh, idea. I got a NATO t-shirt, and I don't want to get rid of it. Hey, come see us on tour. We're going to be in Tampa, Boca Raton, Orlando, Dallas, <laughs> Houston, San Diego, Bloomington, Illinois, Indianapolis, and Levittown, New York. Wow, that's a lot of dates. See you there.